Well, there are those who come into the world and they've made their choices. Most of the people that are in the world today are young souls. So they can, you can take advantage of them by giving them something to believe in. Most people want to be comfortable. They want to be safe. They want to be assured of security. They want to feel good about who they are. They want to be told that they're loved. They want to be given another place to be. In other words, what are you doing with yourself? Are you building your career? Well, religion is to build your soul's career. So what they're doing now is regimenting religion and using it as the point of reference for everybody now to build the soul's career and to follow the soul, to follow and to allow the soul to follow a track for success, which they call heaven. The problem with that is that there are some people within religion who, and the thing about it is it's so insidious, so well thought out. Remember, these bastards had 1,900 years to, to affect this shit. Think about the fact that whatever answer you can give to somebody who's religious, they will always have a counter answer that will prevent them from exploring the subject any further. They are created in that manner so that those people who participate in religion feel that they have the power to answer you without any evidence of what they're answering. They don't need evidence. They have <clears throat> this ambiguous mental framework called faith. Faith is built up upon something that you know happened and thus it says that it's, it's the something of evidence not seen or crap. That sounds like Big Brother. That's a Big Brother programming if ever I heard it. If you have faith in something, that means it's been tried and true over and over again. I'll tell you what I have faith in. I have faith in the seasons. I know for a fact that if everything works all right on the planet, we'll have winter, summer, spring, and fall, even though we're not having any more. I have faith in the fact that there is an ability that when I see the clouds up above, nine times out of ten it's going to rain. I have faith in the fact that I can trust my senses when certain things show me that this is what's going to happen. But for Christ's sakes, I don't know no goddamn Jesus, and I don't know how it is somebody can now dispense with all of what they've been taught and all of what it is that they have been reared to believe is real. They can't say one and one is three. Why? Because the evidence is there. So how, who is Jesus? Well, everybody told me who Jesus was. These people live in secondhand reality because they've been educated in that way. So what happened? The secondhand, remember I told you, the secondhand structuring of consciousness by education predisposes the being to become comfortable with secondhand knowledge. Christianity is a secondhand knowledge of this Jesus Christ. So if you've been conditioned to believe in secondhand experiences all your life, it's nothing to get somebody to believe in a secondhand experience called Jesus Christ. The psychological programming is devious and complete. It's deep. But religious people are so hypnotically connected and so hypnotically focused into the paradigm that they cannot see that they are being orchestrated to believe this. They believe that their belief is theirs because they have been told that their belief will be yours. Not realizing that the years of conditioning to get into that belief came about as a result of a planned, a planned uh, orchestration of your consciousness from the time you're in the cradle. So yes, I know that your frustration of talking to people who is in religion, but it's like talking to people who are asleep. If they're in a coma, they'll hear you, but they won't respond. It's the same thing. There is a defense for every religion, every faith. Every one of them has a way of explaining what they think and what they believe, and they will have that energy with them as their protection. That is their shield. They tell you, Jesus is my shield. You see, Jesus is my rock. All these symbols are there for their comfort, something they need in order to feel whole within themselves. So lately I've been having a lot of people who have been seeking to debate me. 
or wanting to send me a rebuttal, wanting to question me on how do you know magic's real, how do you account for post hoc reasoning, because I've been doing this for decades, I've been doing this a while, and true knowledge comes from experience. Like, you could be reading a lot of books on magic and the occult, but if you don't put that into use, you are not getting experience, you're not getting true knowledge. All you have is a set of instructional information. And that's what we refer to as armchair magicians, armchair occultists. They may have a lot of information that they've collected out of books, but they've never put any of that to use, and therefore they don't have the experience and they don't have true knowledge. They just sit in their armchair, coming up with theories, wanting to debate you, and it can become rather quite annoying. Now, I have stated this up front in my very first videos, but I think it's time for a reminder. I am not out to prove anything to you, for I have nothing to prove. I'm not out to prove to you that magic is real, because no one can prove to you that magic is real. Only you can prove to you that magic is real by doing the work. All I'm here to do is share my experience and my experiences with you. And true knowledge comes from experience. And I don't want that to sound elitist. I'm not trying to be. Perhaps this is why people think that magicians are. Well, you know, they get mad. You know, they get offended. Well, you're just being closed-minded, Freighter, because you won't debate me. No, it's before magic I was closed-minded. Now I'm open. It's just that you have no knowledge. And I'm not going to sit there and debate someone while they're sitting in the armchair of no knowledge. I'm not interested in fame. Quite the opposite, in fact. I really value my privacy. Most people seek out fame for ego validation, but I don't need any of that. The more I'm left alone, the happier I am. But to get back on track, I don't think that the people who want to debate me are stupid, okay? I don't. But you do need to understand something. Intelligence is not wisdom. A lot of people mistake one for the other, but they're not the same thing. And I'm going to say it again because this was almost the title of this video. Intelligence is not wisdom. Remember that at one time, the most brilliant scientists in the world had theorized that if they detonated an atomic bomb, it would ignite the atmosphere and kill all life on the planet. And they did it anyway. Intelligence is not wisdom. Some of the smartest people do some of the dumbest things. They have no wisdom. They have no discernment. And it's because they're too trapped in their left brain. Logic, deduction, reasoning. And they're cut off from the intuitive right side of the brain. The emotional mind. And they look like Mark Zuckerberg, like an android or robot without any feeling. Just a computer and brain and nothing more. The skeptical scientist resides in the left brain. They don't cross the divide. They don't come across into the right side of the mind. Now, I don't want to make it seem like logic and reason and the left side of the mind is a bad thing. It's not. The problem begins when you're too analytical, when you're too logical, when you're too stuck in your head. You remember the guy who I referred to as having nerd brain, who is too focused on correcting a statistic that he missed the entire point of what I was getting at. Being trapped in that analytical left side of the mind causes a lot of problems. But that being the case, we're still all at different levels in different areas. So before you go off trying to debate somebody in a specific area, you may want to check your level of knowledge and experience in that area to theirs before you waste both of your time. And you could be the smartest person in the world. Doesn't mean you have knowledge or wisdom. It just means you have informational data. It means you have a good left side brain computer. That's another thing that they don't get either is that that logical left side of the brain is what separates us from the rest of nature. 